Hey everybody, welcome back. It's a Tandy. We're going to work on some Tandy and stuff and Coco stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is look back at the end of last year when I uh, I bought the uh, Triad 512K upgrade for my memory. That way I could play more games on the Coco 3, some of the newer stuff like Sierra games or some of the homebrews stuff like that that they're coming out with so and let's uh let's just remember this is not a tutorial for anybody they have a great tutorial on their site they have instructions don't follow what i'm doing this is just my experience with doing it and um you want to read the manufacturer's installation instructions and they're the ones that are going to tell you how to do it right not watching me i actually do it uh, one step backwards here right away so they're is already a notion that I don't do things the right way. So <laughs> I, not that it was a problem, but the first thing I did was I snipped these little capacitors and uh, I think they said to snip them off. But what I did is I just snipped half of it and twisted it off so that they're not connecting anymore. And uh, that way, if I ever want to solder it back and put this back to stock, I can do that. I didn't want to remove the whole thing or get under there and desolder it. And then the next thing you gotta do is pull out all the memory chips existing in there. I don't have a chip remover, but I do have a pair of pliers and you just adjust the mouth to the wide and you can grab those very gently. You know, you don't wanna squeeze, you just, it'll, it'll just grab on, which is fine. And then you just wiggle them out very gently. And I keep pressure on the board so it's not, you know, really working the board too much. It's just working out of that socket. So that's what you wanna do, remove those four chips and then you're ready to install the board. So the one thing I'd say for my system, you know, when I watch their video, it goes in very smooth, but for me, it was pretty snug and it's not a big deal because I like a snug fit for that. So what I had to do is I put mine into the left row and then the lower row, I kind of just pulled over a little bit and had it feed in and that worked really great and it was really snug so it took me a while to push this in and I wanted to be very careful so I just pushed a little on the on the vertical row a little on the lower horizontal row and I just went back and forth several times took my time it probably took me about you know a minute and a half I just kept checking to see how much it went down and this is the last push I had there was a little bit left it probably was in there pretty good wasn't going to come out or anything but I was like well you know what I'm just going to get it in there nice and snug so so the memory's great the memory's working perfect I was able to play some of the uh, newer games but then I had a problem that I've had existing on this Coco that I realized after this memory thing and what it was was there's certain key combinations that don't work and I think the memory program that comes with this is where I learned it because you're supposed to push a key combination of maybe a um, shift in the question mark and that wasn't working so I found out some other keys not working over time doing searches I found someone from 13 years ago that had the exact same problem on a Coco 2 so I realized oh I've got a problem with the Mylar in there and I decided to order the key fix 3 and replace the Mylar what's great is I ordered it and two days later it was sold out so I might have got the last one they're probably gonna replenish this someday but I was so happy to get one of the last ones because I just got this and they shipped it super fast I got it in like two days I couldn't believe it it was fantastic but I was super psyched to get one of the last one. Not that I couldn't keep playing games and stuff because a lot of those key combinations really didn't matter for playing games. But I was like, you know what? I'll replace the board and then I'll have the old one. If something ever failed in this, I'll have the old one to go back to worst case scenario to get through most everything. So again, not a tutorial by me. You should read the instructions from the manufacturers on this. But I will say that the memory upgrade and this keyboard upgrade were super simple, some of the least complex upgrades that I've ever had to do. So the first thing you want to do is just open up the case, pull the top off and remove the keyboard. Uh, just pull that, that little ribbon comes out real easy. Just wiggle it back and forth gently. And um, you can see though, for the most part, it looks pretty good. And that's some of the frustrating parts is all the traces look really good on there. So I don't know what's causing the issue. Maybe it's something just dirty inside that Mylar in there. So, uh, but it's, it's odd that it's such a specific set of combination of keys and it, almost everything works. So to really work on this, flip the case upside down the top of it and set that keyboard back in just so it kind of holds it in place. And it'll make it a lot easier because there's a part that comes up here that you're not gonna wanna mess up. So there's lots of screws around this. So you gotta remove the back panel, this metal back panel. And that starts by removing 
all the screws. And so here we are. I'm down to the last. I mean, there's got to be like uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. There's, there's like 18 or something like that. I don't know. But I got those. And so you just pop that back plate off. You're not going to need that after. So you can just set it aside. You're not going to need it. But when you pull the Mylar off, you see there's all these springs under there. And if you lose those springs, it's going to be a pain to pop back in. I mean, it's not going to be impossible. But but here's the Mylar sheet. You see it's like a three-layer thing. And when you press on it, it makes contacts. And like I said, it looks really good. So maybe I've got to get in between there and clean that out or something. But either way, for now, I'm just upgrading this because I thought no matter what, this is going to be a nice new keyboard. And it's got a very clicky style keystroke to it. So I like the clicky sound. It does get annoying when you're playing things, recording it, I'm sure. You'll probably hear that this year. Um, there was a little dust inside the spots where the space bar is, so I just cleaned out that little bit of dust. I didn't take the whole thing apart because I didn't want to have to replace all those springs. And you'll notice that if they all fall apart, there's a different spring for the space bar, and that's colored green, just in case anyone ever does accidentally dump all those. You'll know which one's which. So tearing open the new keyboard um you can see those little buttons on there they're nice and clicky uh, they come with everything you need in this kit there is a little package back here that they put with it an envelope that has the new screws which are a little bit longer the little slider adapter i'll show what that is in a moment you know just pop out all these screws and put them in a safe place till you're ready to install the new keyboard definitely go through I'll, you can pause this if you want to see but you definitely want to read these step by step um i almost missed a step because it was so easy to do i came close to missing something and i'll show you in a moment and i don't know how much it would have impacted it it may have put a little too much pressure on the keyboard maybe not so when dropping this keyboard in there's two little plastic tabs uh, that you can align and it puts the keyboard right in the right position so you don't have to worry about you know aligning every little spring and such like that so if you leave it upside down like that and then I just lifted it to see that they, they were clicking, and they were. Now, again, this has a new set of screws, which are longer than the originals, because you can adjust the travel of the key press because these screws have a little bit more length to them. But I wanted it to be a pretty, you know, rapid key press. I didn't want to have it at the tail end, and then maybe something loosened up, and then it wouldn't press. So I, I, I put them pretty low. So... I screwed in the outer edges and tested there. And what's interesting is you can tell that, you know, it pushes on the outside, but in the center, it doesn't work yet. The keys aren't quite hitting. So once you get around the outer edges, you can screw in those center screws. And what I probably did was I probably put them in about three quarters of the way all the way around. And it feels like you're gonna strip them out or something, but they're fine. You could go even deeper, I'm sure, all the way if you wanted. But what I discovered was after doing that and just kind of, you know, free flowing with it, the only issue I had was right around the G and H key. And it was just, it, it was perfectly fine. It clicked every time, but for some reason it felt like it was just a little more. So I found the closest screw on the back, tightened it up a couple extra turns, and I noticed the difference right away and everything felt consistent across the whole board. So again, this is a super easy upgrade to do. Now, this is a little slider piece that they 3D printed to go on the switch, and it'll poke out the bottom. And what it does is it toggles between a Coco 2 and a Coco 3 mode. And what's interesting is I left it in, if you watch this, I leave it in the Coco 2 mode at the end. And um, it might not show right here, but I, I, moved it, I move it again, and I leave it in the Coco 2 mode. And what's funny is when I put it back together and I tried to play the Sierra game, one of the options is, is to not use the joystick and you have to hit the shift escape break key and that wasn't working again. I'm like, oh no, because that's that's one of the ones that that's, wasn't working on the old keyboard. I'm like, oh, it still doesn't work. There's another chip people talk about that some controller that may, may impact the keyboard use. So I thought, oh geez, am I going to have to do that? And then I realized, oh, oh, by the way, that's the little piece you got to pull out. Don't, don't forget to pull that little rubber stopper out of there. So it gives you a little more room to put the keyboard in. So I remembered after I was like, oh wait, this has two modes. And I switched it back and I had it in mode two and I switched it back to mode three and it worked perfectly. And then I thought, oh my goodness, is it possible that there was someone before that owned this before me or maybe I even did it by accident with a key combination that puts your 
Coco 3 into Tandy Coco 2 keyboard mode or something. And I thought, is that all it really was? So I thought maybe, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, see right there, that's where I left it in mode two. <laughs> um, but, so I started looking that up and then I realized, oh wait, why don't I just start up the computer again, put it in the two mode and try some of the other key combinations. And I did, and I was able to hit like shift question mark, shift apostrophe, things like that. So it wasn't some secret keyboard mode that put the Coco 3 into Coco 2 mode. But if that exists, let me know, because I mean, maybe it worked different with the Mylar thing, but I don't think that's what the situation was. But I never know. I'm always learning something new from guys on Coco Nation or something, you know. I don't get to catch that clearly every week, but I'll catch it maybe once every couple of months, and then I'll try and blast through every week during Septandy to really catch up on a lot of stuff. Uh, but, you know, if that does exist, let me know. But either way, this was a very successful upgrade. So, unfortunately, the clicky version of the Keyfix 3 is out of stock, but they still have a silent version, which is much quieter. So there's still options to buy it. And also the memory upgrades are still available. I really recommend that. Again, it was so easy to install. And now I can play all these other games. So what I'm trying to do every year is just open up the possibilities of playing all the games on this. As you may have seen in our other videos, my wife had one when she was younger. Her father worked for Radio Shack, which must have been quite amazing. It, what's really crazy is when he was working at that Radio Shack, and I don't have a direct memory of seeing him, but I live by that mall that he worked at, and I used to go over to that mall all the time. And he was probably there often, and I was probably one of those annoying little kids that kept walking in, and he was just like, man, for crying out loud, there's more kids in here trying to play games and stuff like that. But uh, So she had one. We had, let's see, we had a Coco 2, but there you go. There's the upgrades for this year. Like I said, I like to spend about 50 bucks or so, 50, 60 bucks a year. And last year was the memory upgrade I put in at the end after the Septandy season was over. And this year, I fortunately got one of the last keyboards in stock for the uh, the Keyfix 3 because I ordered it and then I got it in. And then three days later, I looked on their site and they were sold out. So thank you for having one in stock. It wouldn't have been the end of the world. I could have still played everything. But... I'm really happy that I've got these upgrades in here, and we're going to play some more games this year. Um, I got a couple of games that we picked up a year or so ago that I never got to, so we'll play those, and I'm probably going to play a little bit of uh, some Sierra game possibly this year just to, uh, just to show the capabilities of having the 512 memory in there. Uh, the one thing I have yet to do is replace the uh, the label on top. I've got the label or the little metal strip there to change mine to a Tandy 512K Color Computer 3. I just haven't taken the time to rip it off. It's tucked away safely and uh, it will go on someday soon. So thanks for watching this. And if you have any Cocos and you're looking to do some upgrades to get the most out of them, these are a couple of great ones. The other thing is I really suggest getting one of those SD card readers. Uh, I don't even know where to get those anymore. I got that years ago, so I'm sure they're out there. But those three upgrades right now are making this fantastically fun to play on. And every year I look forward to September to force me back into messing with the Tandy Color computer. Uh, it just, it just, it feels like being a kid again, so... Thank you all for watching, and we will see you next time. So long.